Um, so um, uh, uh, I want to thank Ala actually uh, for helping uh, uh, get this whole program together as well. She worked really hard uh, during this along with Terry to, to make this happen. So, um, so if it goes great, it's, 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 uh, it's really all due to them. If it goes bad, it's because I didn't participate much, uh, as much as I should have. All right, so um, uh, what I want to do is I just want to give you a quick overview of what we're going to do today so, uh, um, or, or through the week and, um, and give you some ideas of, of you know, how we think about things and just, uh, the, just, uh, just a general overview of materials. Tabulomics in both here and in sort of uh, in a global sense. So um, I, always, I always like history. Uh, I think it's one of the things that's always, you know, look back at what people have done before um, because uh, it, a lot of times it will save you time from, uh, time from doing it again. And, um, you know, with tabulomics profiling is, is not uh, uh, all that new. Uh, the ancient Egyptians uh, were able to turn colors of, of uh, 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 in different biological fluids, and they believed that it meant something, just like we do now. Uh, we make correlations between our observations. Um, I thought uh, I always liked this one because at least he's doing replicate uh, sampling. Um, uh, that uh, the, you know, and and we encourage people to do more replicates when we actually do our our our, uh, our data. But you can see that you know that. Standard curves are also really important for a lot of the assays that we do, and this is a standard curve for what uh, what kind of uh, color that people uh, saw in urine samples and, and what it meant. And I think that these kinds of observational studies do uh, are, are very uh, actually important, um, and these are, uh, are what we do with metabolomics for the most part, most part I believe, are, are mostly when we do high throughput metabolomics profiling at least, these are, are really hypothesis generating experiments. And I want you to remember that. That's really an important thing if you're actually going, if you're gonna measure specific metabolites and you wanna make a correlation or an observation related to that, I think that's actually, uh, 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 that is what we do as far as, you know, like glucose levels and things like that, we can make some diagnoses. But a lot of times what we're trying to do is do exploratory stuff and it's hypothesis generating. So um, I think one of the first, at least in more modern era, um, uh, NMR spectroscopy was probably the first way metabolomics was really done. If you weren't doing specific metabolites and you're doing more exploratory uh, studies, um, and this really uh, came from studies at Einstein and, and the Haas uh, uh, un, uh, are allowed to happen because of the understanding of the spin of the nuclei and be able to um, now in the context of different atoms, how they, how they, um, uh, a signal could be generated from polarizing and, and then uh, relaxing the, 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 um, uh, the magnetic field. So you can see the signal and the context will give you identifications of metabolites. Um, um, well, later, uh, uh, later on, uh, the chromatographic separation techniques was really, uh, uh, Pauling was probably one of the uh, originators of this and really uh, uh, started, I believe, what was probably separation technology to be able to look at metabolites. And then up the road, um, uh, Chuck Sweeney at MSU uh, pioneered metabolome profiling using uh, GC mass spectroscopy. And this is probably one of the first uh, like, uh, real examples of you know, start to finish the kinds of things that we do now. Uh, put a bunch of stuff in a mass, in, in a mass spec, separate them, uh, by their uh, physical chemical uh, properties and trying to identify them. So uh, metabolomics is really a high throughput analysis of metabolites. Uh, that's what metabolomics really is. And, it's, it's, and you've all seen this before. It's, it's part of the continuum of DNA, RNA, protein, uh, protein, protein interactions. And then what the proteins do is generate different metabolites. And it's always said that, that the uh, uh, the metabolome is really an echo of what's happening at the DNA level. In fact, I think there's a lot of data coming out to, to show that this is probably true, that your the DNA, or your aerobic variations within the DNA can be 
very informative uh, or, or, or have a large effect on the metabolite levels in, in people's blood. And this is a, a wheel looking at different kinds of metabolites, and the red is the, uh, what uh, people think is the uh, least explained variance um, as the data set is now. Um, estimated heritability for different metabolite levels you can see if the orange is correct, um, upwards of 75% uh, of the levels of metabolites may be related to genetic uh, uh, underpinnings or have a genetic underpinning. Um, and, uh, and that purple is really the environmental effect, the diet, the other kinds of environmental perturbations that affect the uh, uh, metabolite levels. So I think it's really important to understand that the individual is really going to make a difference um, uh, uh, in, in uh, the levels of things that we measure. And the environment is going to have an effect, but it's going to have variable effects on different metabolites. And I think one of the things that we're going to hopefully get across to you today is that you need to look at the metabolome in a much more holistic manner and that the relationships between metabolites and not just specific levels of specific metabolites are really uh, uh, what you, we need to uh, uh, understand. How these things co-vary, how these things are interacting with each other. Because you, uh, just like the, the, the DNA is interacting with each other in episodic manners, the metabolites reflect these inter interactions. And we might be able to, to tease out more of the environmental effect if we actually understand how much the genetic perturbations and how much the environmental perturbations affect not just individual metabolites, but groups of metabolites. So history, um, just how, how we got here today. Um, now, several years ago, we started the Michigan Metabolics and Obesity Center with Charles, who's up here. He's been my partner in crime for uh, through uh, most of the uh, most of this journey. Um, and uh, uh, we started this actually just uh, in, a, in a way to get this grant, which is a Nutrition Obesity Research Center. I do uh, I do uh, metabolism and obesity related research, and indeed we're su successful after a couple of years to get this funded. Um, uh, one of the core, the cores of this uh, nutritional obesity center was the molecular phenotyping core. We were clever enough to not say, uh, call it the metabolomics core. So when we spun out the metabolomics into the uh, MRC squared, which is sponsoring this uh, program now, we could continue calling this the molecular phenotyping core with uh, a metabolomics being a, a lesser part of it. Um, from there, we uh, um, have gotten another grant called MCHEER, which is really just to get a lot of samples coming in. One of these days, we actually may run samples. Uh, this is a program that's been going on for about a year, but uh, uh, we have yet to see any uh, samples being submitted. Um, consortiums are interesting at times. Um, so within the MRC Square, we have an analytical core. We have statistics and bioinformatics core. Uh, uh, George McLady's up, on, uh, up in, the, in the rafters there uh, leads this. The analytical core uh, is led by Sue Penethor and, and uh, um, uh, Bob Kendi over in chemistry. We have a data informatics technology core, which is uh, led by Brian Athey, and, and Sasha Raskin is really the, the, the heart and soul of that, uh, um, and a promotion outreach core. Um, but all of this is really uh, run by Maureen Kochman, and Maureen's up here somewhere. Uh, she's the one, she's the glue that keeps this whole thing together. And so if you have any questions about anything, just ask Maureen first, because she actually knows more, uh, or, or at least has more insight than most of the people, uh, or at least more than me. All right, and here they are. We'll just be, uh, I think I'll show this as well, but uh, you'll, you'll recognize these people, have a great group of people. Um, oh, uh, we have actually one more person, Julia, I don't know if Julia's here. Um, we, we've hired a new uh, uh, programmer. Um, it takes a lot of work to keep the, the operation going. And the philosophy of our core, is, as I told you before, is to really understand things at multiple levels by using both targeted and untargeted metabolomics and lipidomics, which you're all going to learn about today. We really want to be able to uh, acquire the data, analyze the data through uh, uh, statistical methods and visualization to really help explore your data sets. Um, uh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk a little bit later this morning about a data set we've been exploring, I think, since 2008, when we first ran some samples uh, and we kept rerunning these same samples from a study uh, that we did where we fed people different diets. And now we're finally writing a grant now on, uh, on, uh, on the basis of that. But I've learned a lot from one, one data set. And we keep remining this data set and looking at the data again and again. Because every time we find something that's kind of interesting, then we go back to this data set and either re-look at the data set or rerun some samples to see if we can actually see some stuff in there. 
Um, so, and then really what we want to do is be able to integrate this, and we'll talk about this uh, uh, later in the week about how you can integrate metabolomics data with other kinds of data, and how you can practically do that, but also um, um, how you think about um, the relationships be between these things. And then really the, the end point is that we really want to understand taking the data and get knowledge out of it, which is, I think, what we all want to do. So um, the, uh, the core is set up like this. This is just you know, the boring slide that we show that's, that uh, is in the grant. But uh, basically, you can see how we've set this up. Uh, really, the under, underpinning of this whole thing is, is a nice limb system that was created uh, actually with uh, Chris Beecher when he was here several years ago uh, um, and now is being uh, maintained um, and upgraded and made better uh, on, a, on a, uh, a regular basis. But basically, this is just a flow of samples and the information in and out of, uh, out of the system. And a lot of you have uh, interacted with, with this system and the people who uh, maintain this system, Carrie Bonds and, um, um, and uh, uh, Jan Wigington and now Julie are really the, the, the people who really make this, uh, this work really well. And so it's a complicated system, but it really helps keep the data straight and the samples straight for the most part. Um, this is the core offerings. Um, you can go to the website, mrcsquared.umich.edu, um, um, to uh, see you know, what, what you can get. This is probably a, 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 not the latest list of things. We, we keep adding things in response to people like you who need different kinds of assays. And so um, after you go through this course, you'll have some more insight. And if you need different kinds of assays, uh, just come talk to us, actually just come talk to Maureen, um, and, uh, um, and we can help you uh, create new assays. Uh, and it's really helpful to you, but it's also helpful to us because once we develop an assay, then we're able to uh, uh, offer it to uh, other individuals. And so uh, right now we can measure a, a large, large number of different metabolites. And um, again, it's being able to do this. Now, and so it's really easy. To, to split up the world of metabolomics, at least in my mind, is, is targeted and untargeted metabolome profiling. You know, obviously, if you know what you're looking for, we can measure that. If you don't know what you're looking for, we can measure that too. Uh, um, the, uh, the problem is, is, is this is pretty straightforward um, if we can measure it and if you have samples that are able to be measured um, in an accurate and reproducible manner. This is a little bit harder, um, and uh, but this is actually, at least in my mind, a lot more fun to try and understand it. The other part is that, that we're really uh, we're starting, I think, to blur the lines between targeted and untargeted metabolomics profiling through work that's being done in the community and also in the core here. Um, when we run an untargeted platform, we essentially can do targeted metabolomics at the same time, and thus the these words are now becoming a little bit more uh, uh, loosey-goosey, as it were. If you really want to just measure bile acids, we can measure bile acids. But we can see just about uh, as many bile acids in the untargeted platform, and we can relatively quantify it. The big problem is that you can't get the exact quantification or as accurate quantification, and sensitivity is not as, as good. And this, you know, we'll come back to this uh, during the, uh, the uh, sessions in the next couple of days. So, I realize this is cool. uh, But really, in a way, it's, it's uh, again, this should sort of uh, demonstrates this, uh, this interaction. So if you do targeted metabolomics, you can get a standard curve and you can accurately quantify it. Um, you get your, your relative levels of things and then you want to put this in the context of other uh, data set to uh, visualize it and see where things are, are going. And one of the things that we, we generate a lot here is hairballs. Um, as we like to call these things. Um, but these hairballs, five minutes, okay. All right, Ooh, I didn't realize you were gonna, all right. Uh, these are hairballs. <laughs> uh, these hairballs can actually be de deconstructed and I was gonna show you some great ways to do it. The untargeted platform, you can get the relative levels of a lot of things and get the relative levels of this and then you can get a relative level hairball. Um, and uh, again, there's a lot of information uh, in that hairball. Um, I only have five minutes. I'm not going to show you this. I was going to show Casey Thoreau's, uh, 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 who's up over here, who uh, has used the core in the, uh, in the past um, to look at the, the microbiome and different bile acids. 
And uh, through uh, metabolomics, some of this uh, data came from metabolomics, some of the data came from our core, that, um, that you can really see the differences in, in the, uh, the uh, bile acid profiles and, uh, and other uh, uh, metabolites in the stool of, of animals uh, who have um, uh, C. difficile infection. And really from that, she's been able to find, uh, 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 make a, or generate a hypothesis that uh, the ability of different uh, bacteria to grow um, after antibiotics is really dependent upon bio acid dependent spoilation, spoilization, what do you say? Um, sporulation. Um, um, and that, that changes the utilization of different fuels in the intestine. Um, the untargeted platform, uh, uh, is, uh, is an interesting uh, platform. Uh, a lot of work has been done into both normalizing the data across a large number of batches of samples. So one of the things that happens, as I'm sure you're aware, and, and I think George is gonna go through this, or someone will, is talking about when you, when you run multiple batches of samples, there's always gonna be drift and instrumentation and things like that. And one of the challenges is to normalize across large numbers of samples. And being able to do this is really critical to getting accurate and, and informative data out of your data sets. And so um, we've worked a lot, both normalization, but also imputation of missing data and things like that and, and doing the statistical analysis. Because if you just take a bond for any correction of, of your, the square root of your N for any given metabolite, you lose a lot of power very quickly in the ability to, uh, uh, to find uh, 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 statistically meaningful versus biological, biological meaningful uh, differences between your groups. And so you really need to uh, uh, use the latest methods and latest understanding of how things uh, can be analyzed. To, um, I won't go through this. This was a cool experiment, but I don't have time. The other thing we're gonna talk about is fluxomics. Uh, Mahmoud el Zuni, I don't know how Mahmoud is up there in the Raptors too. Um, um, he's going to talk about flexomics. It's actually becoming a very popular tool that, um, uh, uh, that we run a lot by using heavy isotopes, both in vivo uh, experiments and a lot of in vitro experiments to, to explore much more uh, fully the, uh, um, the way metabolites change. Not just that they do change as a snapshot, but more of a dynamic uh, 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 change. And by injecting, uh, injecting or, or treating cells with heavy isotopes, you can get a much more uh, deeper understanding. And I'll talk a little bit more about this later this morning. Um, and you'll, you'll see how this can be used. And finally, uh, uh, what we really want to do is, again, is, is being able to do the uh, data analysis. Uh, uh, Gary Patty's going to talk about the, um, some programs, but, uh, but there's a, a, a uh, our, our, some of our guest speakers are going to talk about programs. They developed, uh, Ala Karnofsky and her game, gang has developed a program called Netscape, which is a, a program that can take in metabolite data and actually in, integrate it with the proteomics, proteomics and transcriptomics data to really now fully integrate and explore the uh, data. Um, uh, the lipidomics platform uh, developed by TM and Tenu Sony um, uh, has been really a boon. It's a great platform to measure hundreds and hundreds of lipid species. And uh, being able to now separate the uh, uh, groups very accurately and very robustly um, by using lipidomics, and, and we'll show you some more of this. And then statistics. Um, the, uh, the stati this is statistics about statistics. Um, and really, um, uh, this is really a critical thing and using the statistics uh, appropriately, but also using it robustly to be able to find uh, uh, changes in very large data sets. And so the, um, um, the statistical analysis of this uh, data is something that we'll, we'll talk a lot about. Um, uh, we're gonna give you a primer on statistics. If you're like me, you probably took statistics once or twice in your career and now you have to do it again just to remember all the words. And so we'll, we'll hopefully it won't, uh, 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 Shervin is gonna give us the, uh, the overview up there. So this is Metscape, we'll go through this. And then we're gonna show you a new tool that we've, that I've fallen, I've fallen in love with over the last couple of years, uh, developed by Gang Su and, and uh, uh, Fan Meng uh, um, when he was, a uh, uh, being Sue when he was Fon's a graduate student uh, called Cool Map. It's a heat map. It's an interactive uh, heat map tool that we really think is very helpful for exploring data. 
and we'll do some hands-on, we'll teach you about it and do some hands-on session at the end of the week, and um, I'll be playing with some of that as well. Um, finally, uh, how we can use the, the, uh, the tools available to really more fully detect associations between uh, metabolites, but also associate uh, and develop uh, different kinds of networks or, 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 or uh, statistically meaningful networks that may be perturbed under different biological conditions. We'll talk about that a little bit as well. And finally, hair volume knowledge. Um, and this is, this is really the, the interactome between metabolites. Uh, you've all seen the Behringer Mannheim, you know, metabolomic pathway charts. It's always daunting, uh, but there's a lot of information in there. And once you can understand how these things dynamically change, you can really uh, get a much better uh, uh, understanding of what's going on and actually derive some knowledge out of it. And so uh, just uh, end up there. Uh, um, and if you'd like to take any questions, Briefly, um, this is an overview. There probably won't be that many, but uh, okay. So, um, should I in introduce the next person? That's what we're supposed to do. But who is it? Charles, oh, my friend Charles. 